My name is Sophia Hopperger, and I am a student at Ecole Florimont in Geneva. The empty chair on this panel is dedicated to Eduardo Cardet, a medical doctor who is a political prisoner in Cuba. Dr. Cardet is the national coordinator of the Christian Liberation Movement in Cuba, which was founded by, by the late dissident Oswaldo Paya. He has led projects designed to, gra to grant the right to vote to Cuban citizens. Dr. Cardet is married with two children and works as a family doctor in the town of Velasco. For a period, he was expelled from his work in retaliation for his opposition activity. He was also detained on several occasions. The last time he was taken prisoner by the Cuban police was on November 30, 2016. Dr. Carday was arrested for criticizing Fidel Castro a few days after his death. He suffered a severe beating by government agents, which continued while in detention. Dr. Carday was sentenced to three years in prison on trumped up charges. Recently, he was moved to a notorious prison in Havana and then beaten brutally. Today, we say to Dr. Carday, we have not forgotten you. Thank you to you and Watch for the invitation. The Human Rights Foundation, chaired by Gary Kasparov and presided by Thor Haversen, are very grateful for the opportunity to once again collaborate in the organization of this wonderful conference. I want to start, uh, before I introduce our panelists, by noting that there are two ways in which we can learn the importance of liberty and democracy. One of them is exemplified by Thomas Jefferson's quote that the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. It is its natural manure, he said. It is its natural fertilizer. That's one way of learning about the importance of liberty and democracy, to have to fight for it, to, ha to have to go through, through horrendous circumstances after you've lost liberty and, then try, and are trying to recuperate it. Another way is exemplified by the great quote of Holocaust survivor Elie Wiesel that said, we must bear witness for the dead and for the living. It is our responsibility to bear witness and to decide what to do with our memories of, of, of the deceased under a, a dictatorship. The second one, obviously, is the one that we are called to do here in open societies, in Switzerland, in the United States, in Canada, in most countries in Latin America today, in most countries of Western Europe, in around 20% of Africa, Everyone that has the luxury of living in a free society, in a democracy, in a country that is not ruled by an authoritarian regime, must learn from the stories of the people that are bearing witness day to day that you have here in this conference that you saw at the, in, the, in the clip at the beginning. We must hear the stories. We, we must learn from what they, of what they've, about their stories, about their suffering so that in our own societies, we don't repeat the same mistakes, we bear witness uh, as they are wi bearing witness of their own societies and, and, and that way uh, rid ourselves from the perils of tyranny that are prevalent in every open society, in every open society. Every open society can shut down in a single generation. Uh, the four speakers I'm gonna introduce today are 
examples of, of heroes, survivors that have borne witness of, of their own countries of their own country's atrocities. Um, and I want I want to introduce them one by one. First of, first though, I want to define authoritarianism by by Nathan Sharansky's public square test. According to Nathan Sharansky's case for democracy, if one cannot go to the public square and freely criticize its government, one is not living in a free society. One is living in a fear society. Authoritarian regimes are, by definition, regimes where people li live in fear societies, where people cannot go to the public square and criticize the government. Now, political scientists go and, and make a more sophisticated arguments that, that, that uh, maintain this general truth. One such political, uh, po uh, political scientist is Steve Levitsky, which we follow at the Human Rights Foundation to classify governments around the world in either dictatorship or two types of authoritarian regimes, competitive authoritarian regimes or fully authoritarian regimes, which are non-democracies. According to our count, 95 of around 193 countries in the world are authoritarian regimes, are ruled by authoritarian governments that do not pass the public square test. That is the case of Vietnam, of Zimbabwe, of Cuba, and Turkey today. Unfortunately, both, all four countries are considered fully authoritarian regimes, full-fledged dictatorships. Turkey was a good example of a competitive authoritarian regime. There was some degree of, of decent competition for power in a climate of harassment and, and persecution, obviously, but there was some semblance of democracy. The same with Venezuela uh, many years ago, but both countries have, have transitioned into complete uh, dictatorial regimes. Uh, we're gonna hear first from Asli Erdogan. Asli uh, comes from Turkey, uh, 85 million people country, a uh, country that was on the verge of becoming a full-fledged democracy and, and of being admitted for membership at the European Union, but that unfortunately has gone completely uh, the opposite way. Uh, in a, in, and Asli, a writer who, who has been herself in prison for being a member of, a, of an advisory board of a newspaper in Turkey, uh, she has suffered uh, political imprisonment, inhuman and degrading treatment in prison, and she is very eloquent, as you'll see in a minute, in, in explaining how horrible the situation has become and unbearable for the free world to, to continue watching idle, how unbearable this situation has become in Turkey. Uh, after that, we're gonna have Guillermo Coco Fariñas. Guillermo is a Sakharov Prize winner uh, the, the Human Rights Prize from the European Union, as you know, as, uh, as well as the Venezuelan opposition today, represented by Mayor Ledesma. He won the Zahara Prize back in the early 2000s. Uh, he is a, is a very brave advocate for democracy. He has uh, essentially risked his life many times by doing, by doing hunger strikes in Cuba for dozens of days, he's been on the verge of, 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 of annihilation, and, 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 but he has survived to tell his story, to bear witness to what happens in Cuba to his fellow dissidents, and to, and to enlighten us all so that we don't repeat uh, the, the, the issues that, that he saw in Cuba. He was a member of the dictatorship. At some point, he was a military man, he fought, with the dictatorship in Africa, and he, he, he's here to bear witness about his experience. Uh, third, we're gonna have Pastor Evan Mawarire. Uh, Evan is a hero from Zimbabwe, one of the worst dictatorships in, in Africa. After Idi Amin who was a, an infamous dictator, probably uh, Robert Mugabe became the best example of, a, of, a, of, a, of an awful tyrant that turned his country's dream for independence into a nightmare of kleptocracy and abuse 
and repression. He is a member of the, the, the new generation that, that is calling on his country for hope, that this new generation that has eventually led to the, to the uh, overthrow of, of Mugabe. Unfortunately, though Zimbabwe has not transitioned into a democracy, it's still ruled by the same tyrants, uh, and he's gonna speak about that uh, today. And finally, we're going to hear from someone that is bearing witness also on behalf of his dad, of his imprisoned father in Vietnam. Vietnam, for, for, uh, Vietnam has, I believe, very little attention compared to the degree of, of, of human suffering that it inflicts on people. Vietnam has a population of close to 100 million people. Uh, and this tiny country that we in the free world, no, mostly because of Hollywood movies about the Vietnam War by the US, etc. This country is, in fact, still today oppressed. 100 million people are oppressed by a dictatorial regime there. And one of those people is, is uh, Eli Gwen's dad. And he's going to speak about that uh, in, a, in a little bit as he bear, bears witness and hopefully illuminates us all so that in free societies, we're able to spread the message, spread the word, so that voters vote for the left or for the right every election cycle, but never vote for the dictatorial left or the dictatorial right, because the, the end result is very similar, and it leads to oppression, dictatorship, and tyranny. With that, I want to pass it on to Ms. Erdogan.